Hey guys, so today is a quick video, uh, a little bit further on the uh, MESR 100 version 2. Uh, yesterday I was out doing some diagnostics on a uh, well-known brand of televisions. And I mean, of course, when you're measuring stuff, you should always uh, discharge all caps and, you know, all that, all those uh, sort of things. I knew for a fact that this TV had been without power for over 24 hours, so I didn't think much of it. I just started probing. Um, I used my multimeter first, just to see that the pulse and connections were good. And I hooked up this and I measured 10, 15 caps. Uh, they were all testing good. And all of a sudden, there was a high voltage cap Actually, there were three of them, but <laughs> it happened on the first one. That didn't have a bleeder resistor in it. So, my meter crapped out on me. So, uh, <clears throat> that was a bit of a bummer, but I figured, hey, I'll uh, see what I can do to, uh, to fix that. So, I took this meter apart. As you can see, I have uh, broken the seal and... Uh, I found on the inside a few... Uh, the meter is working again now, by the way. Uh, it took, took me about 10 minutes to fix, but uh, still annoying. Um, what I did find was I found these two diodes were blown. They were completely fried. Shorted. Both, and both of them are shorted. Uh, luckily, I had so I, I didn't have the exact model. These are SS14. There are a lot of the SS14 Schottky diodes in that uh, MESR meter, but I'm going to use my uh, meter now and uh, show you that these are testing. That one is completely shorted. Well, I had to cut it off so it's, uh, as you can see, it's a very tiny. I'll try and do it with a finger like that. Oh. They are shorted. But I uh, replaced them, and uh, the mirror is working just fine again. But what that made me think of is, <coughs> uh, you could never, even though in this case I knew for a fact that the, the TV had been without power for well over 24 hours, but you could never say uh, or trust that the manufacturers have done everything and put in bleed resistors and all that. So. What I figured I was going to do, because I have this set of no-name uh, probes, and I figured I'm going to make a uh, probable uh, bleeder resistors. So I'm just quite simply going to snip the contacts off of that. And I have a power resistor here. I'm just going to get rid of those. Uh, I have a power resistor right here. Um, this is a 10 ohm, 5% uh, tolerance. Um, and uh, I think it measures in at like 9.6 ohms or something like that. Actually, now it comes in at 12.6. Well, anyways, 10, 12 ohms. Uh, perfect. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I am going to quite simply, first of all, just use my wire uh, strippers. Oh, that 
one didn't take the inner, so I have to take that again. So, and I'm just gonna tin those. some solder on this on the red and on the black So, and of course I am also, because, because I want to, going to use a bit of shrink, shrink tubing. I'm just going to slide it over the one side and I'm straightening out the leads on this so, snip off to make them semi-even and I am simply going to try and do this one-handed need to add some solder to the soldering iron and I Actually, I'm going to try and lay it down, maybe that is easier. Yep. That was easier. So that's one side. Just to make sure that it's not dry joint. Actually, that solder joint needs more solder. So, solder. There, now it's now it's solid solder. Just gonna put that right over there, and somewhere I have one of these. You know. And now I should have about. 12 ohms of resistance between here in a, in a power resistor. There. Manual is at the range. 10.3 ohms. And if I do auto, I'll just flip it once and let's see what the auto tries to do again. Yeah, 10.4. So now what I'm going to do 
is whenever I'm testing or doing some diagnostics, I'm always going to go over the uh, over the capacitors on the board with this bleeder resistor, and uh, because this will discharge the cap in very high, both very high uh, microfarad rating and voltage rating, and this will take it down in less than two seconds. So uh, I will uh, bring out a, a cap, and uh, I will show you. So here I've uh, brought out a 1000 mic 63 volt brand new cap. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to hook up my uh, bench power supply. Uh, it only reaches 150 watts, 30 amps uh, at a maximum of, no oh, sorry, 30 volts at a maximum of 5 amps. But, um, so I'm just going to turn it on and we can charge up this cap and bring out the fluke Let's see if that tells us I should have Theoretically, it should be 12, no, it should be 30 volts on this cap right now. It's 28. So, yeah, 28 volts. And now I'm going to use my brand new discharge probes. And I'm quite simply going to touch that for a second. Bring out the fluke again. And. As you can see, we're now down to 0.2 volts, or 0.3. So yeah, I am now going to religiously use this discharge, or these discharge probes when I'm uh, diagnosing before I touch anything, any cap, because I don't want to get, go into the hassle of blowing fuses, uh, blowing diodes every single time I do that just because some manufacturer who shall be unnamed I can tell you as much as their name starts with an H and uh, it ends with Itachi but the power board is made by a whole different manufacturer Vestler or something like that oh. anyways so yeah remember either make yourself one of these that you can uh, go over the board to discharge all caps safely. You can, of course, short them, but that'll create a pop and all that, and some people don't like that if you're around people. So just use something that can safely discharge, discharge the cap. And uh, 10, ohm, 10 ohm resistor, power resistor, not one of those regular thin metal film thing, thingamajiggies, not one of those. So I will see you in my next video. Bye, guys.